Uh, welcome, 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 welcome. So for class today, um, blocks and a blanket, and we're gonna start off on our back. So you can go ahead and make your way there, laying down, getting comfortable. And what we're gonna do today, um, it's a really damp, cool day here in Brooklyn. And I'm taking advantage of that to have a practice focus on our breath that's designed to warm us up from the inside out. And so what we'll do is um, a whole bunch of twisting, uh, and we'll do some arm strengthening and, um, and hopefully have a lot of fun focusing in on the pranavayus, but more specifically the third pranavayu, samana. Um, so <clears throat> get comfortable on your back. Bring your hands to your belly. Go ahead and close the eyes and just start to breathe in and out gently. Noticing the natural flow of your breath. I'm just going to start to follow the exhale part of your breath pattern a little more. And initially, it's just a gentle following and feeling how the breath moves when you exhale. And then over time, you can start to more deliberately pull the navel to the spine on your breath out. And Samana Pranavayu is that breath movement that originates at the navel and spins and turns and twists us around. So as such, think about your navel center as being the core of a lot of this work today. Allowing the belly to expand as fully as is comfortable for you on your inhale and then to get as strong and engaged navel to spine, sides of body in towards the core on your exhale. Take three more deep breaths, just clarifying the pathway of in and exhales. and trying to double down on the engagement of the exhalation. I want you to take your arms to cactus shape. So the palms upward facing and bring your legs all the way together, knees bent, lift your feet away from the floor so your legs are making a square shape. Push down into the shoulders, push down into the hands without letting the shoulders or the hands come up at all, take the knees over to the right, only so far as both shoulders stay grounded, both hands stay grounded, and you're just gonna hover them. So if you can take the legs all the way to the floor, don't. <laughs> I want you to go only so far as you can hover the legs and keep the left shoulder grounded. Now hold for a few moments of breath, Noticing how with the exhalation, you can twist a little deeper. Breathe into center, legs back to neutral, a second side, crossing over to the left, holding, hovering, taking a few moments to breathe. So while this is a focused beginning, it's not going to be a restful beginning for our work, right? Samana warming us up. It's the breath that we engage as we want to start to change or stir things. Breathe into center 
Start to go side to side on your breath. Exhale to the right and inhale to center. Exhale to the left, inhale back to center. Just find this at your own pace. Mm, doubly engaging into our abdominal walls, into our core spaces, including our back, which is fantastic for our spinal health and stabilizing the shoulder head down, which is fantastic for the shoulder girdle's health. So when done well and keeping the shoulders pinned down, we'll be able to get a lot of therapy for our overused, over inwardly rotated shoulders. A couple more times side to side. Breathing into neutral, breathing out into the twist. And again, just acknowledging how the exhale allows for a slightly deeper twisting action. And then come back upright, legs to the sky. Flex your feet, point your feet, move them around a little bit. And now let the legs open nice and wide. You can hang out in the opening for a moment or two, noticing the stretch through the inseams. And then we're just gonna slowly exhale the legs back together again. Breathe in, open the legs wide. Breathe out, slowly squeeze the legs back together again. And I want you to try to really activate the inner seam leg muscles from your inner groins all the way through the inner ankles. Open as you inhale, close as you exhale. Carrying on at your own breath pace is perfectly fine. If anything, stress, a slower exhalation. Just notice what that can be for you. Many of us might want to speed up the exhalation, right? And speed up the work. And so notice if that's your inclination as well. Try one more, open and close. And then keep your heels together. Just turn your feet out like you've got Charlie Chaplin feet and do this again. Breathe in, open the legs and breathe out slowly, close them, feeling more the hamstrings and the calves engaging. Open, close on your breath, trying to slow down the close. And maybe you're even going slower than I'm going, fantastic, love it. Keep the toes spreading, keep the muscles engaging, right? So you feel a lot of activity here. Yeah. And if you want to get a little saucy or a little playful at the very end of your exhale, you can do like a dance or a little <sighs> crisscross of the ankles, one in front of the other, slowly exhaling to close, and then maybe a <sighs> crisscross, maybe, right? If that feels good for you. <sighs> Try two more just like this. Happy baby's pose. Yeah. I'm just hanging out in happy baby's pose for a few moments, rocking around side to side. <sighs> yeah, friends. From happy baby's pose, feet flat on the floor, stretch your arms up overhead alongside your ears. And just let yourself get long for a moment or two. You're going to hook your thumbs, flex your feet, press your heels away from you. Try and stretch out through each fingertip. Yeah. Now keep the extension of the arms, but just try and move your shoulder blades down your back. So the arms are active, but the shoulder blades are pulling down towards your pelvis. Good. Now keep that and try to slide your sternum down towards your belly button. The ribs almost feel like they're moving towards the earth more. Keep that, send your tailbone towards your heels. And just notice how this refinement has brought you into a deeper engagement at center. And this is an alignment that we'll try to play with a bunch today. So then in the moment, appreciating this contraction, this engagement. 
and now knees into your chest. Go ahead and hold on to them. Rock a little bit around. We're going to come to tabletop position. So you can do anything that feels nice for you to get the tabletop position. When you get to tabletop position, start to move around through cat cow. Easy breath in, easy breath out. As you're moving through cat cow, focus a little bit more on the exhale part of your breath pattern. And see if you can exaggerate the movement of the spine. And as you exaggerate the movement of the spine, feel the full boundary of the breath. Letting everything get bigger and bigger, building from inside out. You know, turn your hands back or sideways and keep doing cat cow. So we wanna clear the wrists as best we can as well here. Right, if fingers pointing towards your knees is way too much pressure on the wrists, you know, just adjust so that you can manage this for a few more breath cycles. Then we'll come back to neutral. Now, if you normally have your hands with your index and middle fingers kind of pointing forward towards the front of your mat, I wanna turn your, turn your hands out a little bit so that it's more of a webbing between the thumb and the index finger, and then come to down dog, take your legs wide. So your hands are externally rotating, your legs are wide, and it's gonna help us create more space in our shoulders and our hips right now. You might even wanna shorten your down dog, move around a little bit, allow yourself a couple of breaths to stabilize the foundation, but also to feel an opening or an expansion in the shoulders and the hips while you're engaging them. Your inner thigh muscles can go back towards the wall behind you. The tailbone can lengthen down energetically towards the heels. Another breath, just letting the space grow. And now you can come back to a more classical downward facing dog. We need to come halfway forward, like you're moving to plank, but bend your knees. So it's kind of like you're in a, a, a hybrid cow pose, right? This is gonna be your inhale. You're gonna keep your chest low, exhale, push your hips back, the knees are still bent. Breathe in, lift the heels really high, lift your hips really high. Breathe out, press your heels to the floor. Again, breathe in, come forward, this kind of low squatting dog, cow. Breathe out, press your hips back, keep the chest low. Breathe in, lift your hips high. Straighten the legs, breathe out, press the heels down. And again on the breath, inhaling forward, the little squat. Stay low, exhale, press back. Inhale, lift the hips, straighten the legs. Exhale, press the heels down. And again, forward, hips back. High, straighten the legs, heels down. Once more, forward, back. Hips high, straighten the legs, and exhale, heels down. Good, high plank pose. Pause, pull the shoulder blades way down your back. Keep the shoulder blades moving down your back, pull the sternum down towards your belly button, tailbone down towards your heels. Lift your right foot, engage the right waistline, tighten the core, change legs. Engage the left waistline, tighten the core, both feet down, chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Go for cobra or upward facing dog pose. Downward facing dog. Good, now just notice in down dog, there's an urge to get more stretch somewhere. And where is that? Calves, 
hips, your shoulders. Just notice how your body kind of wants to engage more meaningfully. Mm -hmm. Now stay in the pose, but just try and pull the ribs in, engage your abdomen more. Yeah, notice if it's possible to even get deeper action in the core for another breath. Then we're gonna look forward as we inhale, step or jump, front of the mat, exhale, lengthen, inhale, fold, exhale, breathing, come all the way up, arms to the sky, breathe out, hands to the heart, arms up, inhale, as you fold, navel to spine, inhale, lengthen, step, jump, or float it downward, facing dog. Right leg for splits. Bring the right foot forward, low lunge. Just stay here for a few moments, adjusting around, All right? You wanna make a square shape with the front leg, so the right knee on top of the heel, hip and knee at the, uh, hip and knee at the same height. And otherwise, just notice how you can get comfortable in the shape. High plank, maybe three legs. Shoulder blades are pulling down your back, chaturanga. Shoulder blades are pulling down your back, cobra or upward facing dog. Down dog, lift your core, left leg. On an exhale, place your left foot forward, low lunge. Move around a little bit, adjust, get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, so that movement is so great. All the little subtle adjustments, creating a little friction, right? Friction, creating some effusion, creating heat, right? It's all working for us. Three legged plank or high plank classical, shoulder blades down, chaturanga, back bend, shoulder blades are still down, down dog, lift your ribs, feel the core engaging in your down dog. Mm -hmm. Especially if that is not always your practice, work on that today in this samana, asana. Breathe in, look forward, breathe out, step or jump front of the mat. Breathe in, lengthen your spine, breathe out, fold. Breathe in, come up. Breathe out, hands to the heart, navel to spine. Arms up, inhale. Fold, exhale. Step jumper, float it down, dog. However you wanna get there is totally fine. And then right leg for split. Bring your right foot forward, low lunge. Stay here, stage one, or arms back at your side, stage two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stay here, stage two, or inhale, high lunge. Exhale, back to arrowhead. Inhale, high lunge. Exhale, navel to spine, arrowhead. Two more. Stabilize into your core. Inhale up. Exhale down. Now everyone full stretch. Inhale, rise up. And then exhale, get your weighted dog. Whatever works for you to get there. From dog, left leg for split. And then bring it forward, low lunge. And you pause and you breathe and you stay here. Or arms back at your side, stage two, arrowhead. And you pause and you breathe and you stay here. Or the little vinyasa, inhaling the arms up for the high lunge and exhaling the arms at your sides. Arrow, right? And you discover what works best for you to generate the kind of heat and the kind of practice that you and your body are looking for right now. Right? This samana will be generating heat regardless of what we're doing. Full stretch up, inhale, everyone. Exhale, flow the dog. And not everyone will do everything that I'm doing or everything that we're invited to do. Some of us will do different things, but the work will still be your good work, right? Allow it to look different in your body. Breathe in, breathe out. Look forward, inhale, step or jump, exhale. Lengthen, inhale. Fold, exhale. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart, navel to spine. Breathe in, arms up. Breathe out, fold down. Everyone float a dog on your breath. Mm 
head plank pulse, legs together. Ground your knuckles, pull the shoulder blades down. Good. Stay here, another breath. And then right knee down, left foot turns flat. Left arm to the sky, modified side angle. Look at your right hand, press the knuckles down and pull the right shoulder blade towards your hip. Stay here, developing those actions. Try to lift the right knee away from the floor. Feel, consciously feel how the right shoulder blade moving down your back is engaging your upper back and pulling the right knee away from the floor is engaging your obliques, left arm over the ear. Two more breaths, link the upper back alignment with the outer core's engagement and downward facing dog pose. <sighs> Should have felt like you were doing something. High plank, legs together. Press the palms into the floor, pull the shoulder blades down, lift your abdomen. Good. Left knee down, turn the right foot flat, second side, right arm up. Look at the left hand, ground it evenly, pull the left shoulder blade down your back, breathe here. Just let that start to make sense. And as it does, try to lift your left knee. And key word is try. You don't have to have the knee come away from the floor at all to engage your abdomen, right? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Not a big deal. I just want you to try to feel the core engage, linking it with the upper back, right arm over the ear. <sighs> you got it, friends. Down dog. And flow to clear your body. We're going to try that again. Some of us might just do the full Bashi Stas in a high plank pose. Set your hands down, shoulder blades down as well. So either bring your right knee to the floor and repeat what we just did on the right side or roll to the outer edge of the right foot and you've got classical Vashisthasana. If you're in classical, lift the left leg a few inches, left arm over the ear. Everyone breathe into your back, shoulder blades down, sternum down, tailbone down, high plank pose. Inhale, second side as you exhale. Hmm. Right arm over the ear, shoulder blades down, sternum down, tailbone down. Feel the core stabilize, inhale, high plank. Exhale, first side. Inhale, high plank or tabletop. Exhale, second side. Do the transition two more times through both sides. Try not to let your hips wobble that much. All right, just notice how you can refine and discover a pace that allows for the most steadiness for your body, right? We're going for safety, right? When the body feels safe, it's gonna make changes that will last a heck of a lot longer and feel a whole lot better. Chaturanga, back bend, down dog. Ha, ah, feeling some activity in our shoulders yet? <laughs> Lift your ribs. Take another full breath here and then transition front of the mat, step or jump. Lengthen your spine, fold. Inhale all the way up, arms to the sky, keep them up. Realign shoulder blades down, sternum down, tailbone down. Ah, good. Take another breath right here. Chair pose. Try to keep these alignments. Shoulder blades, sternum, tailbone down. Mm -hmm. Get a little deeper in your chair. So get to that place that you probably don't want to stay for a minute, but you can stay for another breath. And then you're gonna fold forward, hook the big toes, inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold, bend the elbows wide. Again, lengthen, fold, bend the elbows wide. One more, okay, breathe in, lengthen. 
Breathe out, fold, bend the elbows wide. Hands to the floor, lengthen your spine, inhale. And go ahead and flow, get to Cobra. Take an extra breath or two in Cobra Pose. Reprocess the connection, pressing the palms of your hands into the floor and dragging your shoulder blades down. I want that to really live in your body today, to really cement itself in your body today. Lower down, sphinx pose for a moment. Just lift your left leg up and from your left rib, stretch all the way out through your left toes and try to get the left leg to lengthen as much as you can from the rib case out through each toenail. Good, keep it lifted and lengthening, but start to spin the left thigh inward, taking your foot to pigeon toe, and now bring the left leg down to the floor. And chances are your left leg feels a lot longer than your right, because you just cleared the whole leg. So let's do the second side. Lift your right leg up, and from your right ribs, which is where the leg muscles attach to, stretch all the way down and out through the entirety of the leg, through the hip, the thigh, the knee, through the calf, through the ankle, the toes, and then spin the thigh inward and bring the foot to the floor and hopefully both legs feel pretty much even now. Mm -hmm. Good. Send your arms back, lift your legs up, Shalambhasana, five breaths. Only go so high into this back bend as you can still feel the low back clear. Right? It, it'll be engaging but I want you to try not to compress your low spine too much. So the tailbone's still going towards the heels the whole time. From here, flow, cobra upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right leg for splits, and then bring it forward, low lunge. Bring your back knee down and let's go for a twist. Right arm up to the sky. Ah. Close your eyes, cement the left hand to the floor, drag the left shoulder blade down and know that this is enough. If you wanna go to level two or stage two, tuck your back toes under, lift the back knee. Toe heel the right foot out a little bit so you're giving a bit more space for the hip. Now you could stay at stage one or stay at stage two. Or stage three is to begin to maneuver the right foot towards side plank. Maybe just coming to kickstand Vashistasana with the right foot at a 90 degree angle, or maybe sending the right leg all the way back. Okay. Just two more breaths. Low lunge twist, any variation or side plank. Step or float a dog. Second side. Left leg for slip, and then bring it forward, right knee down, ground the right hand as the left arm goes to the sky. Close your eyes and center yourself. Taking all ego out, just be in the place of play, getting your right shoulder blade down your back. Focus on your exhale and maybe lift the back knee. Focus on your exhale and maybe maneuver your left foot towards kickstand Vashistasana or classical Vashistasana, side plank poses. Notice what works for you with engagement, but also with joy. And we want to be able to still feel good in this work. High plank flow. Down dog, go for a nice long down dog, full stretch. And then come back into high plank pose, reset the shoulder blades down. You're gonna do forearm planks. So come onto your forearms, bring your legs together. Good, stay here, stage one. Or roll to the outer edge of the right foot, left fingertips, modified or kickstand side forearm plank or the left arm to the sky. Yeah. Whenever you need a break, you can bring your knees down or just come out of the pose. Everyone back neutral forearm plank. Try the second side. 
Maybe right fingertips, maybe right arm to the sky. Mm -hmm. Good. Inhale, neutral. <clears throat> Exhale, first side. Inhale, neutral. Exhale, second side. Two more times, both sides on your breath. Inhaling to neutral and exhaling to deepen the twist. Try not to let your butt drop. Keep your hips high. And then after you've done it, your last time, come into Sphinx pose. <sighs> Maybe clear the legs again if you need to. And it doesn't have to be a long, Ah, oh, clearing it can just be brief. And if this feels like the best place for your body to be right now, just stay here, focusing on your exhale, relaxing your eyes, or come back into forearm plank for one more little challenge moment. Lift your right leg up and try to bring your right knee to your left elbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and just squeeze the right oblique up into the body. Stabilize your shoulders, your throat. Inhale to change sides. Left knee towards the right elbow. Yeah. Just noticing how it is to be in this. Inhale, change sides. Exhale, contract and twist. Inhale, change sides. Exhale, contract and twist. Try that a few more times. Ready? Come out, Sphinx pose. For any lucky duck that just stayed in Sphinx the whole time, there's probably a couple of jealous yogis in class. <laughs> Cobra, upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Beautiful pedal through your legs. Right leg's gonna go high. Bring the right foot forward, left knee down. So you might wanna bring a blanket under your knee. We're doing Anjanea coming upright. Keep your hips square, take your arms to the sky. And this is stage one, stabilizing your body, breathing. Stage two, try to twist just your spine towards the right. And once you find that you've gone as far as you'll go, bring your left hand to the outside of the right knee, your right hand to your sacrum, stay upright twisting, or stage three, left elbow to the outside of the knee, prayer hands. Stage one, two, three, breathing. Tuck your toes under, stage four, lift the back knee up. Start to think cat spine, hollowing out your abdomen and notice how that can help you clear your low back on the left side a little more. Maybe bring this to twisted chair. Keep your hips even. All right, so wherever you are, hips are even and you're in some kind of a twist, most likely. Three more breaths. This is very much a choose your own adventure class. Figuring out what's best for your body today. Inhale, neutral chair. Stay in it. From chair pose, fold down, step jump or flow to downward facing dog. Left leg splits, left foot forward, Anjane Asana. Arms up, and yes, maybe some of us are just going to stay in Anjanea the whole time, and that's amazing, right? I'm a firm believer there's a lot to learn in the pose when we give it time, start to twist. And once you find your maximum revolution in the spine, right hand to the outside of the knee, left hand to the sacrum, stay upright in the twist or elbow to the outside of the knee, prayer hands in the twist. Mm -hmm. 
or back, toes tuck under, lift the knee up. Yeah, great. Or step the back foot forward, twisted chair. Hollow out your abdomen, right? Really think cat spine. And just notice how that allows for more balance in your deep low back. And we're gonna start to stretch and readjust your upper psoas that way. It's really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Neutral chair. Get to that interesting place in chair pose. Take another breath. And then you're gonna come upright to stand. Keep your arms up for another moment, but relax your shoulders down. Good. Okay, we're gonna build a little more energy just with our breathing. And we're also gonna clear some stuff inside. So active chair, in and out through your nose, Kapalabhati breath, try and push the breath out sharply through your nostrils. <laughs> So completely hands to knees. Keep the exhale and lift your belly up. Keep the exhale as long as you can. When you need to inhale, straighten the legs. Inhale, come out of the pose, stretch your arms to the sky, and then hands to heart. Take a moment and just feel what that shifts in your body. We're gonna do it again, chair pose. Arms, wherever works for you, Kapalabhati breath. So completely hands and knees, lift your belly, lift your pelvic floor, Uddiyata Bandha, keep the breath out. When you need to inhale, come out of the pose. Arms stretched up and then exhale, hands to heart. Feel what's shifting. One more. Last time, chair pose, Kapalabhati. Concentrate on your exhales. Exhale, hands and knees, concentrate on the completeness. Keep the breath out as long as you can. Inhaling out, arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. And again, acknowledge how much this work shifts in you. Mm -hmm. Right, how powerful it is. And that's someone I front of you right there. And that's that's your practice. Uh, inhale up, exhale, fold, step or flow to downward facing dog pose, please. From down dog, high plank, legs together, shoulders down your back. You're gonna keep your arms really strong, hands planted. And on your inhale, roll over the toes into up dog. On your exhale, pull the sternum to the belly, lift your abdomen, high plank. Inhale, roll over, up dog. Exhale, high plank. Lift your core. Again. 
again. One more time fully. Down dog. Good. High plank and then steady chaturanga to the floor. All the way down. Bend the legs at the knees, reach back, hold onto your feet. Hold your feet or hold your ankles. Gently push the legs back into the hands and let your shoulders and chest come up. Let the legs lift up. And slowly and steadily create Dhanurasana, this beautiful back bend. Try to keep your legs squeezing together, friends. Relax down, forehead to the floor. Maybe completely release. It's comfortable for me to keep holding my legs, so I'm gonna just choose that. We are gonna do John Yurasana again, so you can come back in. And if you wanna make it a little bit of a flow, inhale, lift into the pose. Exhale, tone your core and lower down. Inhale, lift. And exhale, tone and lower. Up and down. Up and down. Twice more. I plank pose. Last one of class, five breaths. Yeah, you've got it down dog. Last one of class. You want an extra flow, go for an extra flow. We're gonna step or jump through to a seated position. Nandasana, legs out in front of you. Hands at your sides, just push your inner thigh muscles down to the floor, lift your spine up. Mm. Staying here until you recenter. And then slide your hands back, fingers point towards the back of the mat, bring your feet in reverse table. Gaze down towards your knees until you feel totally safe. And then you can start to extend the gaze up towards the ceiling and perhaps further. Just keep in mind the space along your spine and notice what you can do to choose towards spaciousness in the spine again and again. Right, and you might start to discover that there's a moment when you start to compress your spine. And if you discover that moment, try to back out of it. Boat pose, Navasana. You can hold the back of the legs, right? Any variation works. You're gonna come back to reverse table. Same idea, tailbone stretches away from your pelvis towards your knees, crown of the head, opposite direction from that. Keep the chest open as you sit down into Navasana again. One more, reverse table or reverse plank. Just three breaths, really commit to three powerful breaths here. And 
And then final boat, three breaths, just three. You're gonna bring your legs down to the floor, stretch your arms up to the sky, inhale. And then exhale, fold. Inside Paschimottanasana, think about the spine lengthening as you breathe in, folding a little deeper as you breathe out. And just stay in the pose, working the spine this way for a few breaths. And slowly come upright. Keep the left leg straight in front of you, right ankle over the knee. For stage two, bring the left leg back, adjust your hips to be centered between the legs, full Agni Stambhasana. We're all gonna twist towards the top knee. So go ahead. Turn towards your right. And as you're twisting towards the right, try to keep the hips square again. Come halfway out of the twist and just fold down along the diagonal line. And you'll stay in the diagonal fold as long as it feels juicy for you. And then gradually ease yourself towards the center line, folding evenly over both legs. And you might know that this is your tighter side. And I just invite you to stay as long as it feels helpful in this hip opening series. It's such a juicy one. You can change sides whenever you're ready. And really I can't stress enough how Important is just to make this your own body's timing. So maybe Ekapada Agni Stambhasana, one leg straight, or full Agni Stambhasana, both legs bent, starting off with the twist, right? So you remember the series, it's not complicated. Just take your time. Diagonal fold at some point. This really has become one of my favorite settle down series. Gradually making your way towards the center when the time is right.
as you complete all of this, once it's complete in your body, come onto your backs. And draw some kind of gentle twist. Maybe you want to do a twist with a thigh stretch. That could feel really good. When all is said and done, when the time is right, find yourself moving towards the Shavasana. As you enter, rest your hands on your belly, close the eyes and just feel how even in Shavasana, there's an inhale and an exhale pattern. Gradually, you'll let the breath dissolve completely. Body soften. Even your mind's eye is dissolving.
Staying still. Bring your consciousness back into the body and hold the Shavasana shape, just appreciating all the sensations of assimilation. Perhaps you stay longer like this today, receiving more and more from your resting. When you find it's time to close your class, bring your attention to your heart, maybe your body to a seated position. And as you keep your gaze inward, acknowledge one final time the power of this work. How we use the breath to transform our body from the inside out. the support there, the resilience there. Hands to the heart, gentle chant of bone from that deep center. Om Shanti. Namaste.